Welcome back, good students. This is part two of three parts where I'm reviewing for the final exam. And we're up to number six, where it says factor completely, and it starts out with 24x to the fourth. Okay, so if you follow me, I'm going to start doing it right here. I already wrote it down. It says factor completely. So we're going to start out looking for the greatest common factor. Remember to always look for that when you're factoring. In this case, 24 and 54, you say to yourself, what's the largest number that goes into 24 and 54? That would be 6. Then you look to see if the variables are the same. They are. So you take out the one with the lowest exponent, x to the 4th. Okay, you may recall this is called the greatest common factor. Once you get the greatest common factor, you leave a parenthesis. If you want, you could divide and get the remainder. I like to do it by reverse multiplying. I just say to myself, 6 times what gives you 24? 6 times 4. x4, you don't need to write because when you multiply 6x4 times 4, you get 24x4. The minus comes down. 6 times what gives you 54? 6 times 9. And x4 times another x4 gives you x8 because you add the exponents. Okay, so we factored, but don't leave this as your final answer. You won't get full credit. The question says factor completely, so you have to check to see if you could factor some more. And if you look right here, where I'm underlining, that's a difference of two squares. Remember that? So we're going to factor that with two parentheses. The first part is 2 and 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, now here you may see the answer right away, 3x squared. If not, just think of it as 9, 3 times 3, and x4 would be x2 times x2. When you add the exponents, you get x4. So it's 3x2, same thing here, okay, and then 1 plus and 1 minus. Remember, we're using the method of doing difference of two squares. 6x4, you bring it down. Okay, and all this would be your answer. Okay, so make sure you practice factoring. That's the type of question you should definitely know. Okay, let's move over here. They're asking you to solve this for x, and it says you may leave your answer in radical form. Now, if you factor, you're not going to get a radical number. You'll get ordinary numbers. For example, x minus 3 times x minus 4, you'll just get 3 and 4. But if you use the quadratic formula, then you'll get it in radical form. So it's giving you a hint to save you time. If you want to try factoring it, you can, but it's not going to work. The signs won't work. So I'm going to get it equal to 0. Change the sign. Remember, you always get a quadratic equal to 0. Okay, this cannot be factored. Just take my word for it. We'll go straight into the formula. I'm going to write it again to remind you. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, this is a formula you should definitely know when you take the final because there's usually one question on the final that requires you to use the formula, the one where you cannot factor. Okay, so doing that, now remember, the first number next to the squared part is a. The number next to the coefficient x is b. And the last number is C. Okay, now remember you also have to get it equal to 0 before you look at that. Now that we know A, B, and C, we're going to substitute. Minus B means change the sign of the B number, so minus 4 becomes 4. Copy the plus or minus, that stands for two different answers. Square root of B squared, that's negative 4 squared, minus 4 times A, which is just 1 times c, which is negative 3. The bottom is 2 times a, which is just 1. Some of you that have done this a lot, you could leave out the 1 and the 1 here. That's up to you, but I would recommend if you're not used to this, put it in. And in fact, I always recommend putting in all the steps. This way you won't make a careless mistake. Now we have to simplify this, okay? And I remember I told you do that on the side. Negative 4 squared, using order of operations, we get 16. A negative times a negative is positive. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. 16 plus 12 is 28. So your answer is 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 2 times 1, which is 2. 
Now the question does not say simplify, so therefore this answer has to be more correct. It says you may leave your answer in radical form. This, of course, is a radical. If you ever do have to simplify, you'd have to break this up. I'll just show you quickly how to do it. You break it up into two numbers that multiply to give 28, and make sure one of them has a square root. In this case, 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Get 2 radical 7, and now you could substitute right in here. You'll get 4 plus or minus 2 radical 7 over 2. If you want, you could just factor out a 2. That would leave you with 2 plus or minus radical 7. This would actually be a 1, but you don't need the 1. Now you don't need this because we factored it. And this 2 and this 2 cancel out, and you'll be left with 2 plus or minus radical 7. So that would be another way to write your answer, but only if the question says simplify. If it tells you that, you have to go further down to here. Generally, in, in Math 104, on the final, they just ask you to uh, write it in radical form. In that case, this would be a good answer. Okay, now we're going to get to fraction problems. Okay, now pay close attention here because each one is a little different. This one is subtracting. When you subtract or add fractions, you've got to get the least common denominator. And in order to do that, if you see something that could be factored in the denominator, do that first. This part right here, it's a trinomial and we're going to factor it. Okay, everyone knows x times x is x squared. Now you've got to find two numbers that multiply to give you the last number and add or subtract to give you the middle number, which is a 1. Isn't 4 times 5 20? And isn't 5 take away 4 1? So 5 and 4 work. If you didn't know that, you could start breaking it up the way I showed you in class. Okay, but in this case, we got the numbers. We need to get a plus 1, and this last sign tells you they got to be different. So you're going to get a plus 5 and a negative 4, because when you multiply, you get negative 20. When you combine a plus, four and a, minus, a plus 5 and a minus 4, you get plus 1. So that works, okay? Now that we have it factored, let's write down the LCD. The LCD consists of each unique binomial in this type of problem. So x plus 5, x minus 4, and here's another x minus 4, but doesn't that divide evenly into this x minus 4? So you don't have to write it again. Just these two would make up the least common denominator. Okay, the next step is to make sure each denominator matches the LCD. This one already matches, so you don't have to do anything. It's already saying exactly what you see here. What's missing here? Uh, x plus 5. So we're going to put it in. Okay, it doesn't matter which side. I'll put it in on the right. Okay, and then the same on the top. Don't forget, bottom and top have to be the same or you're changing the fraction. Okay, now we're ready to put it together. The denominators both match, so we get put it into one fraction. We copy the LCD. Okay, and then we're working on the top. Now it's x plus 6 minus, make sure you copy exactly what you see, 3 parentheses x plus 5. Okay, don't do any math up here yet until you copy it, because you'll probably make a mistake with the sign. That's what a lot of people do. Now that we have it here, we could simplify. If you want, you could do it right above it. x plus 6 minus 3x. And remember, you're doing minus 3 times plus 5, so you get negative 15. Okay, now we don't need this. We're just going to put this together. x and a minus 3x is minus 2x. And a plus 6 and a minus 15, you subtract and keep the sign of the higher number, you'll get minus 9. Okay, the denominator we just copy. Okay, it's not necessary to multiply in the denominator. You could just simply copy it and leave it like this. And that's it. This can't be simplified any further, so we're done. That's that problem. Okay, again, make sure you practice each of these problems, and you'll definitely remember once you practice. Okay, now let's go down to number 9. Now, number 9 sort of resembles this a little, but it's totally different because they're not asking you to subtract or add. They're asking you to divide. When you divide, you don't need any LCD. What you do here is you copy the problem, 
and you factor where possible. So the first factoring is this trinomial right here. Okay, remember 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 take away 2 is 1, so it should be 3 and 2. I say should be because if the signs don't work, we have to look for other numbers. In this case, it'll work because a plus 3 and a minus 2 multiplies to give you a negative 6 at the end, and plus 3 and minus 2 is plus 1, so that works. Okay, the monomial we copy. Okay, now remember, this is division. You have to follow the rule you learned for that. You change it to multiplication. We we'll use the dot. And when you get to the second fraction, don't forget to do the reciprocal. The bottom goes to the top, and the top goes to the bottom. So reciprocal is changing numerator and denominator. So 2x to the 8th, we'll write on top. This we'll write on the bottom, and we'll factor. Do you recognize that that's a difference of two squares? So we get x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, now that it's factored and rewritten properly, we're going to cross-cancel wherever possible. Okay, here it's pretty easy. It's just 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 10, 5. x2 into x8. Now notice 8 is the bigger exponent, so that's where your answer is going to go. And you just simply subtract. Use a basic law of exponents. a take away 2 is 6, so you get x to the 6. Okay, now the other way, we're looking for something that could cancel. And we'll notice there's an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. Don't touch the x minus 3. It's not the same as x plus 3. And of course, it's not the same as x minus 2. So that's it. We're done canceling. Now, to write your answer, you have to be careful and look what's left. What I like to do is go slowly on the top and circle what I see. x minus 2, a 1, and an x6. So it's x6 times x minus 2. If you write the monomial first, it looks better. x6 parentheses x minus 2. Okay, you don't need the 1. The bottom, we're left with 5, and we're left with x minus 3. So it's just the monomial 5 times x minus 3. Nothing cancels here, nothing cancels here, so we're done. Okay? All right, finally we get to the last one. Now the last one may be the most complicated problem. Notice there's a fraction here, there's a fraction here, there's a fraction line here. Whenever you have a fraction over something, that's, a, that's called a complex fraction. And you have to first get everything as a fraction. So this would be 6 over 1, because 6 divided by 1 is 6. This also could be as a fraction over 1. Okay, I like to do it that way because it sets you up and you won't make an error. Now we need the LCD. That's the least common denominator or the least thing that all of these denominators go into. Okay, there's an x squared and an x, a 1 and a 1. Now 1's you don't have to worry about because 1 goes into anything you put here. But look at the x squared and the x. Whichever one is the largest, that becomes your LCD. Okay, and you could check. x squared goes into x squared evenly, x goes into x squared, 1 goes into x squared, and this one goes into it. So that would be the least LCD. Next step, you multiply everything you see in the problem, and I mean everything, by the LCD. So you've got to multiply it here, you've got to multiply it here, you've got to multiply it here, and you also have to multiply it down here. Okay, now watch how we simplify. Now remember, the instructions are simplified, so we can't stop until we have this fully simplified. In this case, these cancel, and you're left with... You're left with a 1 plus... Okay, here x goes into x squared and leaves you with x. x times 5 is 5x plus... And nothing cancels, so you get 6x squared. The bottom is x squared times the binomial 2x plus 1. Keep binomials in parentheses when you're multiplying by monomials, and don't distribute. I'll, you'll see why in a minute. x squared times 2x plus 1. Okay, now a lot of people would write this answer and think they're done. You're not. 
you have to check to simplify. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this in the proper order from the highest exponent to the lowest. So 6x squared plus 5x plus 1. The reason I did that is so that we could check to see if we could factor and possibly cancel with something down here. Okay, now this is a trinomial. The only way you would cancel is if you turn this into binomials and it matches this binomial down here. If it doesn't, you can't cancel. So to do that, I'm going to try using 2x plus 1 up here to see if we could cancel. So we break it up into 2. I'm going to put 2x plus 1 up here. And let's try to fill this in and see if it's going to give us 6x squared plus 5x plus 1. Well, 2x times 3x, wouldn't that be 6x squared? So 3x. 1 times 1 would give you 1 at the end. The question is, could we work this out to make, give us exactly that? And the answer is yes. Notice these are only pluses, so you'd only need pluses. And now to check if this is correct, just think of multiplying. 2x times 3x gives you 6x squared, so the first term works. To get the inner term, just think of doing inners and outers, plus 3x plus 2x. Isn't plus 2x and plus 3x plus 5x exactly what's in the middle? So that checks. And then multiply plus 1 times plus 1, you get the last term, plus 1. So all three things work out, and therefore that's factored correctly. Copy the bottom. Okay, and now notice there's a x plus 1 up here, I mean a 2x plus 1 rather, and a 2x plus 1 down here. They're the same, so they cancel. Okay, this is a monomial. It's not going to cancel with any part of a binomial. So you leave these alone. Just copy them down. 3x plus 1. And the bottom we're left with x squared. And that's as far as you could simplify, and that's our answer. Okay, this was much harder, and this was a longer question. If you recall, when, when we had done this, I gave you a lot of examples. Make sure you go over those examples and also go over things in the homework and also in the textbook. And once you could do some of these and get them right, you know you got it. Okay, so good luck on this. Make sure you work on this carefully. And next time I'll give you the third part and that will cover all the problems or all the types of problems that you're going to need for the final. Good luck and have fun doing this. Bye for now.